it's wedding day! We're in Zanzibar today for a destination wedding. Mark weds Pamela. Mark is from France and Pamela is from Tanzania. Um, Tumefrai sana kwa sababu this is actually our first destination wedding and we're really excited kwa sababu Zanzibar is one of those places I have always wanted to kufanya kazi, like to do a destination wedding. It has um, beautiful scenery, it has unlimited um, number of um, things and places you can visit here. Yeah. I'm really excited about today's episode because I'm sure it's going to be like one of the best we have ever done and it's going to be a great experience. We have um, been doing a lot of things prior to today. Lakini leo nitawapeleka through each and everything that tutakuwa tunafanya. We are not the wedding planners, we're just doing the decorations. So I'll take you guys through for you guys to see the, de the details of the decor each and everything. And I think it's going to be an interesting episode that you will definitely enjoy. But it's about to rain and I don't really know Kwanini the devil wants to be a liar, lakini. But the weather focus shows that today is not supposed to rain, so I don't really know what's happening. Rain, rain, go away. Come again another day. <laughs> so yeah, come along and for you guys to see what's going to be happening and cheers. It's going to be so much fun. So welcome to the ruins. This is a chapel and of course it looks like those historical buildings that we see like in movies and you know stuff like that. So this is where the vows are going to be done. Um, we decided to go more of a very plain look on the seats because um, it's not like a beach setup. It's indoor type of a setup. So we opted to go for this white bank with chairs with the white covers, with this white carpet. So the only person who's gonna walk through here would be the bride. The other guests are gonna go across, aside to their seats. So after the bride walks through the white, she's the only person who's gonna walk through here. And then after that, how with her husband, will they walk out? So you can come along. And then I show you exactly what I'm doing, um, what this is all about. We're still finishing up, yeah, we haven't yet finished everything. Um, so the bride will sit here and the groom will sit here. And the best man will sit there and the matron, the maid of honor will sit here. The priest is going to sit over here. And uh, this is something very beautiful, something very different from Vituvia Kawaida that we are used to. Um, we've reserved a seat and we're going to put like five roses for the people who passed away, like the family members of the bride and groom, who if they were alive, they would be here for the wedding. We opted to go for this type of arc rather than the usual um, round semicircle type of arc because I felt like the other type is kind of overrated. Um, a lot of people use that on their setup. Setting Kwaio, that's why I decided that we should use this instead. And the bride didn't, wasn't really particular in telling me that Gladys, I want this and this and this and this and this which made it very, very nice and um, it let me explore my imaginations. Um, yeah, but of course the colors we were supposed to play with some lavender, some white, some greenery, which we have done that. And yeah, with the lanterns, of course, to just make it more, how can I say, it? just to add a little touch to show that we're actually in Zanzibar. And uh, yeah, but I really, actually, Ikifika around, around four or something like that, there's like actually doves who come here and they fly around and I think it's really, really beautiful. And uh, yeah, so this is the ruins. They're gonna do the vows here and after the vows, that's when they're gonna go to the reception. This is Helen, New Year's Essence. We're in her town, like she's, a, she's an entrepreneur who is based in Zanzibar. So it was really fun having to work here, knowing that my very, very good close person is also here. And she's one of the people that only wants 10 people on her wedding. <laughs> So she's also definitely going to do a destination wedding of just 10 people. Yeah. Including me though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take you guys through the table setup of the guests. Um, the first thing that the bride and the groom um, decided to, I, I had asked them, okay, they told me that they need to have table numbers. 
So every because they have like a sitting chart, so every person is gonna know where they're supposed to sit. So we thought of different things and we came up, we decided that we're gonna use the, the water bodies that they've ever visited. So the islands, the lakes, the rivers and stuff like that. The places, the water bodies that they've visited together. So, for, so each table has a place they've been, um, a water body. So like this table is Bongoyo, this table is Bongoyo, so this table is called Bongoyo table. So on the guest list, all the Bongoyo um, seaters are going to know, okay, we look for Bongoyo, Bongoyo table, that's where we're going to sit. We also, um, I decided to incorporate the lantern to have, especially this um, type of lantern, so that it could have the Zanzibari type of feel. Because from how this, this lantern is structured, it has, it looks similar to the to the ruins where they're doing the vows. Yeah, so I think it will blend well. And of course, some greenery because the, the bride, Pam, insisted she loves greenery. We have some white roses and some pinkish purple carnations. And yeah, and some floating candles. And we have the menu here, which, thank you, Patty Zako, you always have me. <laughs> this menu cards, we decided to have artwork that will go similar to the table numbers. As you can see, they're, they're in sync, yeah, just so that everything can flow together. And of course, the lavender napkins, because we were really working with um, shades of uh, lavender, some greenery, some of white, of the sort. So, yeah, so this is our complete table setup. I'd love to say the, the whole experience of um, planning something away from your comfort zone, away from the city that you normally work for, on its own is a challenge because you have to think of so many things. Will I transport everything from this place to the other? Will I, what will I, will I get everything that I need in the new city that I'm going to? So for us as eventfully, this experience was exactly that. It wasn't no different. I had to find vendors in Zanzibar to be able to see what I can be able to get from here. That way I don't need to travel with a lot of things from Dar es Salaam. You know, the bulky things like the chairs and the tables, you know, I, I made sure that I could get here. But there are some things that you need to get from Dar es Salaam. We needed to get the flowers from Dar es Salaam. We needed to get the table accessories from Dar es Salaam. We needed to get the table accessories, I mean like the, the candle stands, the, the candles, um, the lanterns. Um, and, all, and all that and also there's that risk of forgetting things back home so what happened was because I have a team we are like we had a team that was started coming from there to Zanzibar a few days um, prior a few days to the wedding day so I personally came on Thursday with with the stuff that I needed to get here some people came on Friday Two people came on Friday with the flowers that you know they need to get it because we get flowers from Nairobi. So from Nairobi to Da, from Da to Zanzibar, we, we needed to get the flowers to be able to you know to to put them in water and you know so we had to buy like big basins, put them in water for them to not to die, you know, to survive and yeah. And then so like on Friday there was three trips of people. The first boat came with the guys who were fixing the lights, you know, the fairy lights, the paper lanterns and and all the other type of the hanging bulbs as well, yeah. And then the second boat came, came with um, the people who were coming with the flowers, yeah. And then the third boat came with, uh, not the third boat, the fourth, but the last boat came with our florists, um, the, um, like our head, head, head florist. We have a couple of florists that we work with, but there's that one person who, who is like the head and, you know, we work with him more, more than every other person and he's the one that actually teaches the other people more. Um, so you can imagine, you know, all that communication, trying to see this and this, who's going to come at what time, to make sure um, everybody comes on time and doesn't miss the boat and stuff. Then there's those charges at the port that I had no idea would be there. They were, there were some that I expected, but I came to get like other charges that I had no idea that were going to be there. So to me, that is that has been the biggest challenge. And something is there's the risk of forgetting things, you know, no matter what. How many days prior you make you make you put your your um, your list of um, items that you need to carry checklist there's still some things that you forget so you're like okay now it's saturday this and this is forgotten in that what's gonna happen if i like this if i like this item is my decor still gonna be nice and things like that so that's it
Most destination weddings have few people. Um, the advantage of it being having few people is the fact that you will only have your loved ones and the close people and the people that matter most to you, they will definitely come. So you would avoid the having hundreds of people in your wedding just because it's convenient for them, it's close, you know, for them to be there. So you have so many people that you're not really sure of, maybe some people you're not so close to, you know. But if when you have a destination wedding, the chances of you having only the people you love and only the people who care about you are high, which I believe is um, one of the best things ever. Every, any bride in group would wish for. And another advantage would be, um, it's different. You get to say I do in a very different place, um, different uh, because not so many people do destination weddings. It's not really in our Tanzanian culture, you know, uh, and tradition. So we are type of, um, we have a culture of just being so close with like a lot of people, you know, that's why our pre-wedding events, our weddings normally tend to have a lot of people, you know, but if you have a destination wedding, that will not be there. So um, I think that is one of the advantages. You should start preparing for a destination wedding at least one year before, yeah? If one year is too long and you probably got engaged very fast and expectedly and you want the wedding as fast as possible, at least six months before. If you have to, to plan a destination wedding um, maybe three months before, I'm not so sure about that and how you can be able to work through that. You know, unless it's just maybe six of you, the bridegroom, best man, matron, and um, two sets of parents and that's it. You know, because you have to also consider the, the, the calendars of people. You have to consider what everybody would be doing at that particular time. So you have to start informing them way, way early. You know? Hotels are normally booked. You have to start informing them. Hotels are normally booked. You have to start making the bookings. You have to start saving. You, have to, you know, and all of that. And most of the time, especially in the Tanzanian culture, because we have the tradition of contributing to each other's weddings. Unfortunately, for destination weddings, it's never that. It's never like that. So. The close people that you have, whatever amount of money they might decide to, to give you to help you get through, you know, it's not really compulsory as much because you're set, you're taking your wedding away from from the the normal the, the home city or the hometown that everybody is, you know. So for them, it's also costly because they need most of the time they need to still pay for their transport, their accommodation, and things like that. So if you want to do a destination wedding, you really have to plan yourself way way earlier. If you want to do a destination wedding, having a wedding planner literally compulsory. It's very hectic, like I had said prior, so uh, once you have someone who will help you just go through everything and just carry the load on top of their head, you just pay them to do that, you will actually enjoy and have a, a better smooth um, wedding season for yourself, you know, like the whole like month or two months of planning, you know, someone else is helping you with that. Um, yeah, so I think if it's the, the number one thing that you should think of when you're thinking of having a destination wedding, you okay. Destination wedding, number one, to-do list, get a wedding planner. You'll be sorted. <laughs>